we are live. Welcome to WandaVision Thoughts, episode 8. So, as usual, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. Also, possibly spoilers for the Fox X-Men movies leading up to this point, since it's possible that Pietro from those movies is the one we're now seeing on WandaVision. And I will discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by me, Rockstar, Screen Rant, Nervous Screen Crush. I saw some YouTube commentators joke that now that we've gotten the theme song for Agatha all along, every MCU villain from now on should be introduced by, by song. That would be very funny. One reason that I don't want that to happen is you really shouldn't give Eric Moss of New Rockstars more excuses to sing in his Easter egg videos. I'm joking, I'm joking. I sometimes sing in my videos. It would be really hypocritical if I criticized someone else. His, his singing is perfectly fine. I enjoy his videos tremendously. I would honestly kind of love if each villain from now on gets a theme song, especially if they're performed by the, the, the villain actor themselves. So the episode before this one was the first episode where Wanda woke up alone and Vision didn't wake up in their house at the start of the episode. And yeah, so I, I had guessed that this episode would open with her still trapped. And I did wonder if they were maybe not going to do the sitcom thing. And, you know, I did have the idea that maybe it would be like about two witches it, you know, instead of about a couple on their vision, but yeah, you know, it makes a lot of sense to, to break from that format. Let's see. Yeah, another theory I had was maybe Wanda wouldn't be a main character of the sitcom. Others have pointed out, you know, when, before Wanda goes into the basement, the TV screen has, the screen has the TV aspect ratio, when she goes into the basement, it becomes like normal, so she's in the real world, not the sitcom world. We've, you know, we've seen aspect ratio changes in episodes on the show before, so yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. I, I really think it would have been a, a mistake as far as tone goes to take this, to, to have, I mean, basically this one doesn't have sitcom stuff. It, you know, we, we, we get some references to actual sitcoms and, you know, Agatha says, let's check out some real reruns, but the episode doesn't have jokes. It doesn't ever follow a sitcom format. There's no ad. You know, the, from the very start to the very end of this episode, it is just this sadness and grief and loss. Like, we're constantly submerged in Wanda's pain. Even when we think, you know, oh, this is a nice moment, you know. I mean, we, we almost forget what episode we're... Well, I don't know if we do, but, you know, literally, like, Oleg shows up. Yeah, TV night, American sitcoms, you know, and they sit down. Ah, my favorite episode. And, and yeah, you know, within a few minutes... The, their parents are dead, and then they lie there for two whole days waiting for that missile to go off. You know, it's just, it. there's no relief. There's no, come to think of it, I don't think, you know, this, let's see, the episode is maybe 35 minutes. I don't think it's a full 40 minutes, but it's getting there. I don't think there's a single joke in the entire thing. I think that may well be the longest the MCU has ever gone in any one production in a row with zero jokes. Like there is no like cute little moment to to ease off the tension. And personally, I've always loved the MCU jokes, but I, I mean, there's some chance. Well, I guess Doctor Strange two probably won't. I don't. I I'll admit I haven't seen absolutely everything he's done. But I think Sam Raimi almost always has jokes. And not only like just, oh, maybe also when he's doing something scary, especially when he's doing something scary, there's jokes. You know, they, they might be really messed up, dark comedy jokes, but there's jokes. 
But yeah, let's see. So I just rewatched Endgame, and in at least one of the trailers for it, I had forgotten by now. But in the trailer, there's you know, there's some black and white footage with the only color sticking out being red. So I don't know if that does have anything to do with how on this show, the first two episodes, you know, almost everything is black and white, but there's a little bit of, of red. You know, to her, Endgame was just weeks ago. I don't know, it might just be that, you know, it's a it's a thing. Like, it's striking, you know. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll stop theorizing before I find some way to make Sin City part of the WandaVision universe. Moviebot recently made a video where he talked about that he was really grateful that the people behind this show didn't panic and change their ending because it was guessed by online fans of the show. I have to 100% agree with that. And he gave, I think, two examples, and the first of them I watched, and I 100% agree with him. The second one I haven't watched. But, yeah, I think that's as close as I can get without directly spoiling, but, but yeah, you know, because as he points out, as he pointed out in the video, people guessed that Agnes the nosy neighbor was Agatha Harkness before we saw a single episode of the show. You know, the promotional material told, uh, told us, you know, Catherine Hahn will be playing the nosy neighbor, Agnes, immediately. Tons of people, you know, put out videos saying, Agnes might be Agatha Harkness, and we are more than, like, we we get that reveal at the end of the seventh out of nine episodes, you know, that's, yeah, it's, it's, um, they, they clearly did not freak out and try to rewrite, you know, oh, man, it would have been a mess if they had tried to fit that reveal into an earlier episode to, like, try to get out ahead of it, you know. I don't think that it... Like, when I when I watched the episode, like, I wasn't surprised that we got a reveal that it was Agatha Harkness, but I thought it was a really strong and powerful reveal. You know, we see all this magic stuff, and you have these... Yeah, you know, like, it's, I knew that eventually we'd know, we'd find out that she was Agatha Harkness all along, but I had not expected that it would go as dark as it does, and this episode also really, really dark. Anyway, that brings me to the notes I actually did take while watching this episode rather than ones I took before. The Marvel logo turns purple, and I've seen others say usually the you know the red of the marvel logo doesn't like always mean oh scarlet Witch. you know yeah actually now now i can call her the scarlet Witch. actually i probably did earlier in in some of the other videos and maybe some people were extremely confused by that if they don't know the comics but or the i think it was wasn't she always i, I think in the old car x-men cartoon hmm. anyway I guess I'll just stick with Wanda for now to minim minimize any con possible confusion. Too late. The, the, yeah, you know, it doesn't normally you mean Wanda's magic. That's not why the Marvel logo is red. Red is a striking color. Doesn't mean it always has to do with her magic. But now it turns purple, which, you know, some have pointed out it's like up until now, the show has been under Wanda's control, but now Agatha is taking control. And we go to Salem, Massachusetts, 1693, yes. And, you know, I, I like the, the, like, the moment we see 1693, and we know there's at least one witch character on the show, like, we're immediately thinking, Salem Witch Trials. But it turns out to actually be the 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 other witches, the the rest of the coven. And let's see, you know, basically she they say 
that she has been practicing the darkest of magic, and they're worried that eventually she's going to get good at it. No, that joke will never get old. And this is the first episode to start with a flashback. I guess even featuring a flash. Well, I guess actually, yeah, technically there was the, the throwaway joke that, you know, Pietro talked about their childhood. But other than that, we haven't seen the flashbacks. I don't think. And it's also the first episode where we open on a character that isn't one of the Maximoffs. And we realize that the witch leading the accusations, the, the leader of the coven, is Agatha's own mother. Of course, they couldn't actually show a witch being burned in a PG-13 show, so this energy thing is a good alternative. And, you know, they're, like, shooting blue... You know, it, it looks like, essentially, like... It looks a lot like fire. You know, and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, yeah, at first it seems like it's, it's like, it's really painful for her, at least, but she manages to turn it purple and kills the witches. And I appreciate that it's not like, again, this is, this is dark. Like, it's not like, zap, and then they fall. It's like, ah! you know, several seconds of excruciating pain and then they fall over and their skin has the, like, burn kind of, like, yeah, very, very effective. Please, I can be good. No, you can't. And, let's see. Yeah, you know, they can't actually show burnt flesh on the witches, but they push it as far as they can on a PG-13. Very disturbing. And we see that the brooch that Agatha has been wearing, you know, all this time on the show, is her mother. She took it off her charred corpse. And Agatha talks to the bunny. They have a brief conversation, even though we, the audience, can't hear the bunny speak English. And, you know, apparently some people thought that, excuse me, this might indicate that the bunny is like her son, Nicholas Scratch, in, you know, a furry form, but others didn't think so. I, I figure it probably, it's a, you know, yeah, at, le at least one person said that it's more, it's, it's like... The the bunny is her familiar, F familiar, familiar. Which, if you know, for the uninitiated, is the let's see. The yeah, you know, a, f a familiar is, you know, a witch has an animal, side, yeah, sidekick. Let's go with that, and it's you know, it's it's not actually an animal, but yeah, I've if if the next episode features the bunny talking, and it's the voice of Nick Bacay. That would be incredible. Now, yeah, I don't think I was being very stealthy about looking at his name up, excuse me, on IMDb on the smartphone. And Agatha confirms the theory that Wanda cannot read her mind. And Agatha is very sinister and cruel and just... It's, it's unreal that, like, the first time we saw, like, there was always a slightly creepy thing about her, the way, you know, there's no character on this show that has never at all been creepy. Okay, maybe, maybe Darcy. No, yeah, once she was inside the, the hex, she turned creepy. Yeah, yeah, basically every character has had at least one creepy moment by now. 
Maybe, maybe not Wu, I guess, but yeah. But Agatha, you know, Agnes used to seem so, so helpful and sweet and, and giving, and now she's just this really, yeah, we're, we're really seeing, I mean, when you think about it, she's actually been incredibly patient, considering how clearly, like, in this episode, she is, she can't stand how easily this magic comes to Wanda. She, you know, she talks about the, the ruins, and she's like, how do you not know the basics? I, um, one of the, one of the Easter egg people said that, what's the name? Caliostra? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't know very much about it, but like, the, the, in real, in real life? I think in real life, and also in the, the movie, was the movie called Amadeus, maybe? The, the, you know, apparently in, in real life, the, the talent at piano came really easily to Mozart, that's his name. And that really bothered this other guy who had to work extremely hard. And I, th I think his name was Cagliostro. So yeah, the, the, one of the Easter egg people said that Agatha is basically Cagliostro to Wanda's Amadeus. Mozart, that's the name. And the, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's, it's the, yeah. I was so patient waiting for you to reveal your true self. I got close with Pietro. And she points out Wanda couldn't have resurrected her real brother since he's on another continent and full of holes. And Agatha sends the Cicadia you know, bug onto Wanda and it's like crawling on her face and just, uh, I'm really, really glad that in real life that's CGI. They did not actually ask Elizabeth Olsen to stand still while a bug was on her face. That would, and, and that's like, that's something you can't get away with in a PG-13 and it's just, it's, it's super effective. Seeing a bug crawl on someone's face while they're like you know that there's like if if that thing crawls around for there long enough it's gonna go and like her mouth her nose you know just yeah let's see and Agatha talks about transmutation and Wanda running illusions on the edge of town magic on autopilot and she turns the bug into a bird, then back into a bug, and then the bunny eats the bug. Really, like, sin sinister, creepy, gross, disturbing. It's very, very effective. And... Yeah, you know, she is determined, Agatha is determined to get the information out of Wanda, and, like, slams her into walls. And she takes a hair of Wanda's, off of Wanda's head, and someone like pointed out that's like um the, the sorry the latin she speaks is apparently something like may the memories come alive or something and yeah and then a door nearby changes and when she walks through you know for the rest of the episode wanda's past is showing via flashback it's you know it's not wanda doing it. It's it's Agatha making it happen. It's time to look at some real reruns. And Tommy and Billy cry out for her from beyond the door. So she walks... Yeah, she walks through it when Agatha... You know, talk about opening the door. And... Yeah, so, you know, first thing is the, the Maximoff's childhood in Sokovia. And, yeah. Now that we are seeing what their real parents did look like, it does, you know, ev evidently, the, the, ad, the male actor and female actor in TV ads are not the... the 
the Max Mouse parent. Though that theory did make sense, I thought. And let's see. yeah, Oleg, their father brought some sitcom DVDs. And yeah, and Ag you know, Wanda basically becomes like her childhood self. And yeah, and at this point, I guess that a lot of the episode was going to be flashbacks, and maybe we weren't going to get an intro sequence, and yeah, we, we ended up not getting one. I, I really appreciate that. It, it is like, it's not that the real show WandaVision, not the show within a show WandaVision, the, the, the show we're watching on Disney Plus is not a sitcom. It just appeared as a sitcom because that was what Wanda wanted it to be, you know, but once she was no longer in control, it's not a sitcom. And Irina looks out the window and there's battles going on and I like that little, like she's not, she's not even shocked she, or, or surprised or anything. It's just, yeah, that's that's our reality. And yeah, so they sit down to watch the Dick Van Dyke show. The family looks so happy together. It's not that there's no arguing, but it's very mild, friendly, not like vicious arguing. And Wanda is really enjoying the sitcom, and then there's the explosion, and yeah. And yeah, we see the, the Stark missile and, you know, Wanda was watching the sitcom right at that. And then Agatha points out the reason the missile didn't go off is that Wanda used a probability hex, which is one of her powers in the comics. She can make things less likely or more likely to happen. And, you know, for, for the people who... I, I get, I understand people who who were frustrated when Age of Ultron ended and no one had really defined Wanda's abilities, but we're, we're getting there, you know, now, in, in this episode we get a lot of details and we even get, you know, the, the name drop of Chaos Magic and the Scarlet Witch, which is apparently like a title rather than which which I think, let's see, in the comics, I think there's one version in the comics where it's inherited from mother to daughter. Yeah, I, I think it, in at least one version, it's just that that's what she calls herself, similar to how, like, Ant-Man and the Wasp don't call themselves and each other that because there's a, just, it, it seemed fitting, you know, it's not that they're actually, like, part Ant or part Wasp. Similar to, you know, like, Spider-Man actually was bitten by a radioactive spider. But yeah, we see she had at least some powers, even as a child. It was, you know, it, it was natural and, you know, the, the power stone, sorry, mind stone made her power stronger. That's why I accidentally said power stone during the hydro, hydra experiments. There we go. And, yeah, we see, you know, Agatha points out, you know, an anti-freedom terrorist organization. And Wanda's asked to touch the scepter. Even though, you know, and, and we get reiterated, no one else has survived the experiments, you know. And I wasn't into, I, I don't think it's her using telekinesis. I think it's the stone is moving in response to her. I forget, did all of them have, like, a mind and will of their own, or was it only some of them? I forget. Now, let's see. But yeah, you know, the, the, 
the main stone comes out of the blue stone that was in the scepter, and Wanda's bathed in the yellow glow. And there's apparently like a, a figure walks towards her, and there's a couple different theories. You know, is it is it is it a witch? Is it a Wanda Maximoff from another part of the multiverse? You know, the the ah, what's it called? Since since she's a Nexus being. And and yeah, she she falls down. They realize she's still alive. They get her to isolation, and she's watching sitcoms in isolation. And they're trying to figure out what happened when Wanda touched the stone. I have a theory, but I need more. So this was why Pietro wanted to talk about their past. But it turned out he couldn't get very much out of her. And that's why Agatha is being more direct now in her approach. And, and yeah, so we see Wanda and the Avengers compound, Vision, and they, you know, the, they, you know, watch sitcoms together. They're just they're really sweet together. And I think they're watching Malcolm in the Middle. And she explains to Vision, the guy on the show wasn't her. It's not that kind of show. So that's part of why she chose it. She wanted to not get hurt again. You know, you, you'll note that she, I think she laughed when, when, you know, the, 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 let's see, was it Hal? Something fell on Hal or something. And she laughed. And then he's like, is it funny because he got hurt? You know, it's, it's. And, and she explains, no, 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 he's not hurt. It's not that kind of show. So, you know, she she basically knew that she's going to, more things are going to go wrong. You know, people are going to get hurt. People that care about her, people that she cares about. But if the world is a sitcom, then, it's, then they'll be okay. Because it's not that kind of show. And... You know, Vision Vision offers Wanda that they talk about Pietro, but she says the only thing that could make her feel better is seeing him again. And that's, you know, the, the what's the word? Um, you know, that's by, by the, you know, that, that was what she was thinking already back then. And then once Vision died, she decided she had to bring him back to life. She couldn't keep losing. And I've always been alone. I guess this is Jarvis speaking because I don't think Vision himself has existed for that long at this point. I realize that it's, I, I don't think they say exactly. It could be like a week after the events of Age of Ultron. It's definitely after the Age of Ultron. I mean, events of Age of Ultron, and almost definitely before the events of Civil War. So, yeah, I, but, you know, Jarvis, I mean, we don't know exactly, I, I don't think we've ever been told exactly when Tony created him, but we know that he's been around since 2008, at least. And, you know, he didn't get a lot of love and affection from Tony himself. He's, he's a, he used to be at least a very closed off guy. And, you know, he thinks of Vision, of, of Jarvis as some, you know, someone that works for him, basically, more than someone to take care of their emotional needs. And they both laugh at something funny on the show. And I I really like the the Yeah, they're just they're they're so good together. And Agatha keeps trying to get Wanda to tell her what happened next. I really appreciate this retcon. I'm almost certainly we already know that when No, I'm I actually I am certain we did not know that when the Stark missile hit, they were in an especially happy moment right before it. I mean, it would be one thing 
if they were already kind of miserable and it's just, uh, you know, one more level of miserable. But no, they, you know, if like, if up is happy and down is, you know, they were like all the way up and then, you know, within seconds going, it, it gets about as sad as it can. And we see Wanda talking to the sword people, trying to get them to give her Vision's body. And she says it's for a funeral, but we do see after, you know, I don't think she was, it, I don't think she was thinking of a funeral. I think she wanted to try to bring him back, you know, with the, yeah, based on the, based on the, the deed for the, the, the house. And yeah, by the way, real quick. There's a couple of theories. Some people think that it was Hayward who got, you know, certainly theories suggest that it wasn't Vision. It could have been, hypothetically, but it makes a lot of sense for it to be Agatha or Hayward, and they basically wanted her to try to bring Vision back to life and, and go to that, you know, that, that house or, yeah. The, the the place where there could be a house in Westview. And the guy at the front desk gets a call and gives Wanda directions. And she doesn't need to be buzzed in. She just forces the doors open. And, you know, we see she's trying to convince them verbally. And, you know... Right up until we see that she doesn't take the body, I still did expect the ending of the, the, the sequence to have her take the body like we saw. And yeah, and hey shows that they've been they've taken vision apart. At first she doesn't even realize it's him. You know, once she can see the face, you know, she realizes, but at first she's like I don't understand. What, what am I looking at? He's not there. You know, just, yeah. And, yeah, she sees the, the head that they chopped off and just, yeah. And Hayward talks about Vision like he's just a thing, something to be used. And talks about, oh, well, you know, we have to. He's, he's a very dangerous weapon. He is extremely valuable since his body is, you know, it's, there's all this vibranium in it. And just, yeah. And Hayward asks Wanda to bring Vision back to life. So that internet theory was, in fact, correct. He's all that I have. But that's just it, Wanda. He isn't yours. And Hayward calls off the guard so that Wanda can examine Vision up close. And so she does, you know, destroy the, the glass and jump down. But she doesn't proceed to take Vision's body, so, yeah, very, very surprising. And, you know, she walks up, and she, she puts her hand over his forehead, and she says the words, and our hearts shattered, I can't feel you, and it's just, uh so painful, because that's, you know, she's literally been able to feel him since before he came out of the, what was it called, the, the healing casket, or, you know, um, I'm sorry, the South Korean scientist talks about it in Age of Ultron, I forget exactly what she calls it, but that was where he was built, she could feel him even back then, and now she can't, and it was the first time, just, yeah, and, you know, as, yeah, the really big thing with I can't feel you is the that was that was the thing you know the, like the the let's see first yeah like I think he asks her to to check it and she says I just feel you and then at the end sorry in Infinity War and then at the end of Infinity War he says I just feel you and she has to kill him and then he comes back and Thanos kills him you know just so so yeah. And Wanda walks off and gets into the car letter. And at, at this point, I actually, I was still thinking, but she's going to go back. Like, I thought that she was going to look at the letter 
and then be like, no, I am not leaving without him, go back, and, but no, she drives to, into Westview without his, his body, and no, yeah. Let's see. And, and she pulls into the driveway, or drives into the pullway, something like that. She finds the, yeah, goes to that place that doesn't have a house, and the letter you know, it, it indicates this was the exact one, and, you know, it was apparently from Vision, and we could grow old together, and it just, yeah. And, you know, I, I think the, the letter is very meaningful, so I'm gonna go ahead and... Th this is the entire quote. In my restless dreams, I see that town, Westview. You promised you'd take me there again someday, but you never did. Well, I'm alone there now, in our special place, waiting for you. I, I didn't put a lot of feeling into it, because it was kind of a long quote, so I just went through it. And, and she walks into the place, and, you know, she starts running, she kneels down and unleashes a lot of energy that slowly spreads out. You know, we're seeing the origin of the Hex. She builds the house that they live in, in the sitcom. She for, forms, yeah, yeah, forms the force field, and then she brings back vision seemingly out of nothing and some have pointed to once the the as she's creating him he is yellow energy not red energy so she is reforming him you know uh, what was it they said the the with with the energy from the mind stone rather than her own magic and yeah, everything except Wanda is now black and white. Vision is in front of her. She takes a few steps now. She's in black and white as well. Her clothes are period appropriate. And and it's around here that we even see the, the you know, I, let's see. I don't, we, yeah, we see the crew and we see where the audience would be sitting. I, I don't remember if we actually see the audience, but we, we see Agnes sitting in, in one of those seats. And Vision welcomes Wanda home. They sit on the couch and kiss. And let's see. Yeah, and, and once we see Angs, you know, she starts a slow clap. And let's see. Right, yeah, and then Wanda again hears the, the cries of the children. So she runs out of the house, and Agnes is, like, almost hanging them really, really messed up. And let's see. I... Yeah, so the... Let's see, the... the we do... We... It seems like that the the two children, the twins, really have, you know, they, they do somewhat exist, although it's possible that, like Vision himself, they can't leave the, the force field. They would cease to be, but the, you know, yeah, I think Agatha straight up says, you created life out of nothing. And that's especially something, you know, obviously she would like to be able to do that herself. Look at Agatha rocking that witch wardrobe. And yeah, and Agatha talks about how powerful and dangerous Wanda is. I'm really glad that they didn't end the episode without us seeing Billy and Tommy again. I'm more okay with, you know, we also didn't see, yeah, so, so, fake Pietro, some people are calling him Fietro, that makes a lot of sense. You know, the, the, sometimes it's just, it's, it's a good way to, you know, you, you have Benry, you have Fietro, and, yeah, so we didn't see Fietro, we didn't see Monica. I, I'm okay with us not seeing them in this episode. It was very much specifically about Wanda, Agatha, and 
you know, how Agatha feels about the twins. That to her, they really do just represent. She, she just wants to be as powerful as Wanda. This is chaos magic, Wanda. And that makes you the Scarlet Witch. First time she's been referred to as her comic book alter ego. First time it has been referred to as chaos magic, which is what it's called in the comics. I really appreciate that. I'm actually kind of glad that she hasn't been referred to as Scarlet Witch before now. Because this is a really perfect, like, straight up, we have another witch saying, you are the Scarlet Witch. You know, this is, we, we've never had, I don't think we've ever had witches before the show in the MCU. So, other than, you know, potentially Wanda herself. And in, in that case, it's not something that, like, really defines her. It's, it's maybe a suppressed part of her, you know. We, we've really more considered her a, a mutant, or, or a potential mutant. Enhanced, is, I think, is what she's referred to in, in Age of Ultron. And, let's see. Yeah, first episode to not have any intro sequence, to not feature any sword people except for the flashback and the post credit scene. And... And, and yes, I do count the first episode, the person watching, I think it was Dr. Lewis, and the second episode, the beekeeper, as sword people. And yeah, basically the entire episode is this series of flashbacks. Let's see, we have childhood, we have Hydra experiments, we have Avengers Compound, and then we have when she goes, to, you know, post-end game, when she tries to, yeah. And, yeah, only here at the very end, we very briefly see a little bit of present-day stuff and the opening of the episode. We, we, you know, we, uh, yeah, before they go into the flashbacks, before the, the we go into the Wanda flashbacks, there's this brief bit of present-day stuff as well. And we don't, let's see. Ah, what was the other? Let's see. I think, you know, I, I think it's interesting that Agatha decided to lure Wanda out of the house instead of keeping her in the basement. She could have done that if she wanted to. You know, she chose to go outside and then have the kids cry out for her. That, you know, that was how she lured her into the first memory. So she could have just done that, lure her back into the, the room of the basement where she... Well, I guess, yeah, in the flashbacks, she also doesn't have magic. So they, yeah, they're probably... It just looked like they left, but in reality... Or they're, or maybe it's the entire basement that's completely closed off. And, but yeah, she didn't lure her back in, and she doesn't seem scared when Wanda does charge up her magic. You know, that's not some... Usually people get kind of nervous when Wanda starts making one of those red... I, I think I'm going to keep calling them wiggly-woos because that's too funny to not use. When Wanda produces a red wiggly-woo or two, people freak out, understandably. So the fact that Agatha... You know, she, she's not only like, oh, okay, crap, uh, Billy and Tommy, go back to Mommy. I wasn't doing anything creepy and scary and dangerous and... Never mind me, I'll just be off. No, she's, she's, like, she, she's not even remotely put off by it, so I have to wonder if she has some sort, like, if when Wanda starts using her power against Agatha, if there's some kind, if, if she's hiding something that can, uh, what's it called, absorb the energy. She did, like in 1693. If Wanda attacks her directly, maybe she can turn her, the the chaos man well no wait no she says it's special chaos man i guess maybe not but i do think she has a plan and and another post credit scene second episode in a row to have that i i can imagine the very last episode will also have a post credit scene and it'll be something that very directly points to doctor strange too 
or possibly one of the other Disney Plus series, similar to how Iron Man 2 didn't hint at Iron Man or Avengers, it hinted at Thor. Now, let's see. And, yeah, so the post credit scene, Hayward is told they're ready for launch, and, you know, we see the drone, which still has the, the red magic coursing, like, through it or across it or something, and, you know, Wanda disabled it, but she didn't destroy it. And, you know, when she threw... It's... Is it the f the only thing... Like, people and their clothes have been thrown out, or really is only Monica, I guess, has been... You know, she was thrown out of the, the hex, the force field. But this is the first time we see an object be, you know, taken from inside... Actually, yeah, and actually, you know, it went from outside the force field to inside to back outside, and now it still has the, the energy course. Yeah, mostly things seem to, like, yeah, because when Vision tried to leave, he was pulled apart. And, yeah, so, you know, this is something that, yeah, still has her magic. You know, they can't, like, draw something from the force field itself. But her magic is coursing through the drone, and they use it to bring to life Vision's body. And, you know, this is clearly Vision's real body. And, let's see. Yeah, and, you know, he's basically, he's got this kind of white, you know, yeah, form and... That was apparently like in the, uh, what's it called, in the comics there was a bit where he was white and like apparently he didn't have his personality matrix during that and yeah, I mean it, it you know, yeah, it, it looks like the, the final episode might have some vision on vision combat and you know the the easter egg, several of the easter egg people have posited that when paul bettany said that he there was there was a an actor he'd been he'd been really looking forward to working with and he'd never got to you know play opposite this actor maybe he was being cheeky and referring to himself if there's going to be a fight scene where he fights himself so that's yeah, and, you know, sometimes these kinds of things can be kind of, eh, you know, okay, I guess that was, you know, that's that's one way to have a fairly even fight, but, you know, I, th I think this is going to be like, okay, I'm not saying that it's going to be as powerful as in Logan when, he, f let's see, yeah, when Logan, f when Logan fights, X-26, crap, I don't remember, X-25, I think it was X-25, you know, at the end of that movie, I'm not sure if it's going to be at, well, I guess it's possible, since we do care very deeply about Vision, and hypothetically, if Wanda and the sitcom vision actually do destroy vision's old body which they might be they might have to they might be the only way to stop him that's definitely going to mean that he will never ever be able to that you know she can never bring him back for real and i i could imagine it'll have like this really teary goodbye as she removes the the force field entirely even though it means that as she's doing that, her her children and sitcom vision will just cease to be and just yeah. Anyway, real quick on the post credit scene. Let's see. Yeah, you know, he's he's been brought back to life and like looks at his hand. It's it's such a great like it's it's really old you know a, a creature comes to life 
and it looks that it's in, but but it works it works there's a reason that we've seen it a million times it's legitimately like because we do we have no idea but there's a there's a good chance that vision is now going to be controlled by sword you know and i think one of the easter egg people said that like i i have to admit i i didn't look closely enough at his forehead but one of them said it looks like there's now like a an arc reactor there where the mind stone used to be and i can imagine that it makes sense and yeah it's going to be really difficult to wait an entire week before I see what happens next. And it's also going to be like, to, you know, I'm excited to see how it ends. But I'm also like, I'm really going to miss the show. When when it's, you know, don't get me wrong. I am extremely hyped for Falcon, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But I'm not sure that one's going to be that much of a mystery. I feel... I. It seems like it's going to be fairly, you know, action-heavy and and some like thriller kind of intrigue and such, but not, you know, certainly not as mysterious as this overall. So I guess the way that they made it seem like Wanda had stolen Vision's body was some sort of surveillance video manipulation. I could see that. I mean, they had most of what they needed. They had. Or did we not see her? Come to think of it, I'm not certain we saw the body being removed. We saw her smash the glass, jump down, and then I think she took out the cameras, and then Hayward just said to people, this is what it looked like when she stole his body. And, that, and that's maybe also why, like the, you know, I think it was the episode before this one, Hayward said, you know, make sure the team have everything they need. We're, you know, ready for launch. And the the, the person he said it to was like, I'll carry out your order, but I really don't like this. And maybe they, maybe, I think, I think, you know, maybe she was upset that Hayward has been lying to, you know, ab about the, what happened to Vision's body. So Hayward appears to only have been interested in the Westview Anomaly because maybe Wanda could be of help in bringing Vision back to life. He realized that, you know, she okay, she couldn't do it before creating the West, Westview Anomaly, but the Westview Anomaly was way bigger use of her power than ever before. Let's see, and... You know, and, and Agatha, let's see. Yeah, and, you know, we, we didn't even know that her powers could transform objects. And, yeah. So, it is now confirmed that the Vision we see on the show, on the sitcom, WandaVision, is not actually the real Vision. And that's why he couldn't survive outside of the force field. Wanda literally can't keep him alive, keep him together outside of the force field. Let's see. And yeah, again, I can't help but wonder if, if Vision isn't real, there's a certain chance that Billy and Tommy aren't either. I mean, unless it was someone other than Vision who fathered them, you know, we're, we are definitely headed for more trauma for Wanda by the end of this main series. And... There's a decent chance that Sword can control Vision now. He was originally built to be a weapon. The fact that he was good back then may have been in part due to the Mind Stone, which is not on his head anymore. And Ultron did build him to be a weapon. And, you know, when he's treated like a weapon, he is extremely effective. So, let's see. And I actually, I guess, Tony and Bruce were also kind of trying to make... They, they certainly wanted someone powerful that would be on their side. And, yeah. Let's see. And I like the, you know, they, they, excuse me, Hayward literally sets 
We've taken him apart and put him back a million times. We've tried everything, but maybe what is necessary to bring him back is was something right from the source or something like that. So I'm guessing maybe Hayward wants to try to send Vision in to stop Wanda, or at least disable her enough that Hayward can use her, or maybe he just wants to kill her now that he has Vision and Vision works. And I'm pretty sure I heard at least one internet theory that it was important that Wanda's magic was still all over the drone that she brought out of the force field, and the theory may have even posited that you know, maybe her magic could be used for something, so, yeah. I mean, we only saw it very briefly, and I'm not sure we heard anyone talking about that it could be useful, but, yeah. Yeah, so the end of the episode with the twins being threatened by Agatha, you know, she must still want something from Wanda, but it did look like she got the questions answered that she had at the start of the episode. And let's see. And yeah, you know, basically the flashbacks are to times that she used her powers in you know in in an unexpected way and and that kind of thing and times that related to how how deeply she loved vision and i think there was actually an internet theory that the reason the missile didn't go off despite we know that stark tends to be quite dependable when it comes to weapons was that she used a probability hex and I, you know, sometimes people think that I give the MC, the you know Kevin Feige and others who who work hard on the MCU too much credit, but I can't help but wonder if possibly they did have that in mind when they, you know, when when making Age of Ultron that that because it is like. Usually Stark's weapons work perfectly. You know, he, he really doesn't make very many mistakes. And, yeah, it's it makes it makes sense considering her power set. <clears throat> I think last week I expressed some uncertainty as to whether or not, you know, Agatha was for sure evil. I'm 100% certain that she is now. We, we still haven't seen Mephisto or Miralfisto, in case it's Ralph, or the like. I do think there's a pretty good chance that we, you know, there is someone more powerful behind Agnes, but maybe not. It is possible that it... Yeah, I mean, let's see. The... the it was Wanda who created the force field, and we saw, you know, in Agatha all along in the theme song, we see that she comes in to, but it's already in black and white. We don't see her make the four, you know, so she she was drawn to it by, you know, she's, she's always looking for ways to increase her power. So she was drawn to the force field, and once there, you know, she, she could tell, okay, it's Wanda, she's behind it. How? How is she this powerful? What is her magic? I want to know it. So she, you know, moved in next door and, you know, set about trying to find ways to get more information. And she took an interest in the children once they, yeah. And yeah, the, the, <clears throat> What's it called? Um, it is basically confirmed now. Ag Agatha was pretending to fit in with the sitcom. She wasn't actually... It, it seems like everybody else 
in Westview was under Wanda's mind control, but not Agatha and not the kids, not P not Pietro because he was under Agatha's control. And yeah, so the, the episode title was Previously On, and the description was Wanda, what does that say, embarks on a troubling journey revisiting her past for insight into her present and future. I feel like it makes a lot of sense that until recently, Wanda basically assumed that she didn't have her powers as a kid that she didn't actually cause the Stark missile to not blow up because it was still a pretty out there idea. She assumed that she got her powers from the Mind Stone and this is also a pretty strong indication that she's going to be revealed to be a mutant possibly by the end of the final episode and you know the Mind Stone further unlocked her powers, increased her powers, but she already did have at least some of her powers and yeah the the it's, it's, we don't know for sure exactly how the mutants are going to come out of this, but we have a lot of ideas. There are a lot of theories, and uh, several of them, you know, if, if the Mind Stone can give powers, then presumably other Infinity Stones can as well. Presumably the, the radiation from it can, you know, unlock your, you know, the, which is how Monica became Photon, and yeah. You know, there's some chance that the people who were inside the hex will come out of it with powers. May you know, it's also possible they'll be pulled in from the multiverse. But it definitely may. and and yeah, there there's also the theory that the the one of the three snaps, you know, when when it unleashed a lot of of, of radiation from that, that that could have. You know, because it was apparently so powerful that, you know, like, in, in Endgame, we find out that Rocket and the others could track it. They could, you know, they, they looked over the, the universe and they could spot here, there's a there's an explosion of, of, of energy. And that kind of thing only happens when someone snaps the Infinity Gauntlet with all six stones. So this wasn't quite a clip show. That is the thing for sitcoms and TV shows in general. I have seen a lot of flashback heavy episodes of TV shows. I'm not sure very many of those shows were sitcoms. So, you know, we maybe are going away from sitcoms. Certainly the tone of this was not very sitcom, more like a sci-fi thriller. You know, now that Agatha is in control of the show. Uh, you know, or certainly she's having a lot of influence on it. She's changing the genre of the show. Yeah, actually fantasy sci-fi thriller to suit her own needs since this is answers to her questions which couldn't have been delivered in sitcom format they're just those answers are too sad when we see wanda driving through westview mrs hart was sitting by herself looking sad maybe arthur wasn't real but was created out of nothing like vision was in you know Apparently some people feel this was a filler episode. I mean, almost everything in the episode was new and important. I mean, holy crap, if you skip this episode, like, if, okay, if you've watched up to this part of the of my video and you haven't watched the episode itself and you think, oh, it's just filler and stuff, definitely watch it. I 100%, there's not a single episode of this show that I think you should skip. There's... Every single episode has something really important, and this one, we get so many such major answers. Right, real quick, the some of the Easter egg people, you know, have, have theories about exactly why, you know, we, yeah, it's fine. Ag, you know, it was, you know, Agatha all along, you know, we see her do several things. We see her send Pietro, which she says in this episode, you know, it wasn't me, it was my eyes and ears. She used him to ask questions. She figured that Wanda would accept questions like that from her twin. Let's see. And she... 
she she messed up the magic show because she was hoping that the people of Westview would see the magic powers that Wanda has. Let's see. I, hmm. Were those the whole thing? I, I don't offhand remember the other ones. So this episode, we see that Agatha is surprised that Wanda knows so little about witchcraft, even though she is a powerful witch. And, right, and, and the, yeah, you know, we, she said, I killed Sparky too. She might have done that just to see if Wanda could bring him back to life. Because she's not sure if the vision is a creation of Wanda you know, in, in this episode, she, she gets that answer, but she might have actually, you know, if 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 Sword in general just spread the rumor that they don't have Vision's body anymore, then you know Agatha she goes into Westview just to see about all this power that she might be able to use, and then she sees Vision, and she's like, did she resurrect him? And so that's. You know, which, you know, some people have pointed out, I th yeah, in the first episode, when she shows up at the front door and gives them, um, what's it called? Pineapple. The, you know, that the, ah, what's it called? Yeah, you know, when she does that, Vision is right there, and she's like, so this is the husband, and she, she does this weird sort of thing that, in in the second episode, we see Wanda do that right in front of Vision, and she's doing that to scan him to see if, you know, she that's when she finds the big red gum. So, you know, Agatha was trying to get close to Vision, trying to scan him, trying to figure out, is he really, did she raise the dead, you know? So the sitcoms have special significance for Wanda because it was what they were watching when waiting for the missile to go off. It was something that, you know, it was a way for their father to show affection. So it's, you know, it's like as long as she's in the sitcom, it's like her father is still alive and showing affection. Let's see. I'm not 100% certain what happened with the Mind Stone once Wanda was close to it in this episode. It, you know, it kind of seemed to vanish from the room. Some uh, just in her head. I guess the idea is supposed to be that what's it called? Like once once she like collapses, then it just flew back and disappeared, and and then they come in and and check. Yeah, that that must be it. So Agatha wasn't there when Wanda created the force field. Let's see. Yeah, presumably she could sense it. Was determined to learn more. No ads this entire episode. Now that we know that Vision was, that the Vision we've been seeing was created out of nothing by Wanda's magic, I hope that it doesn't mean that all the times we saw him trying to figure out what was going on are just misdirects. Honestly, I don't think so. She created Vision to be similar to what he was like, you know, based on her memories, and that Vision would want to know, you know, his his past and such, and you know, the, the, that's, you know, we do know that, we know now, that's literally why he doesn't remember anything from before Westview. That's exactly what he said. She didn't say that. She, you know, she did not have that problem, but he did. So, you know, she, she, it seems like she created him without his memories of his past experiences, and he's just basically... You know, trying to fit in, trying to, in the first episode, trying to make sure he does a good job at work. In the second episode, trying to make sure it's a safe neighborhood. And gradually he comes closer to uncovering the truth. And he's really just going where the answers lead him. He's not, like, trying to find something where there isn't something. He's following the, the clues. Yeah, for sure, based on the other episodes, despite Vision having been created out of nothing by Wanda, he does have a mind of his own. He does things that she wouldn't want him to. Which also, you know, the kids do things that she wouldn't want them to. 
I can't imagine. I, I think I have actually heard that, you know, some people, yeah. I think it was the, the, um, never mind, I don't remember what it's called, but the, one of the Easter egg people said that apparently, you know, I'm, I'm not following all the, I, I mainly get my information from the Easter egg videos. I haven't been following, you know, there's, yeah, I, I don't know, Twitter, Reddit, there's probably various places where people are discussing the, the episodes. But apparently some people didn't like that this episode was not sitcom, you know, at, at all. I can understand that. I think that I, I, I mean, this is another of my favorite episodes. You know, I love all eight episodes we've gotten so far. I, I think that it's best that they go where the material naturally takes them. It would have been really awkward if they tried to fit in sitcom jokes in this episode or a sitcom tone in this episode. And the and and it is also I understand people who felt that all nine episodes should have been sitcom. But basically what we what we saw in the sitcom episodes, so, excuse me, episodes one through three and episodes f five through seven, we're seeing Wanda trying to cope with all the grief and loss she's experienced in her life. And the, the you know, in, in this episode, she's not able to do that at all. She can't, the, the, I mean, yeah, literally, Agatha forces her to confront all these painful memories that she has. So, it, it, I, th I think it's the exact right way to do this episode, but I completely understand, like, don't get me wrong, there's, there's stuff where I am like, I, I get that they wanted to take the franchise in that direction, but they should have stayed with what they, you know, 100%, I understand it. But, yeah, you know, basically, it's it's kind of like in the in those other episodes. And that actually, that's interesting because episode four was also a break. So we get three episodes in a row of sitcom and then a break. And three episodes in a row of sitcom and then a break. And it seems like, this time the break is permanent. It, we're not going back. Wanda is not going back to living a sitcom existence again. That's just not gonna happen, you know. And yeah, it, it's basically like it's it's like when you watch a movie where someone is trying to sugarcoat the they're just trying to trying to cope with reality, and then yeah, near the end they just they can't you know. I'm, they're they're like I I I've been sitting on this for so long I can't I have to talk about it now, and they go into this really painful thing. So, and that's the thing I can't really give examples without spoiling those movies. I guess let's see. Okay, yeah. So I like I said I'm I'm spoiling the MCU, and the and the Fox X Men movies. Let's see. The the um, okay. This is a real. I'm not saying that X Men Origins Wolverine is a good movie. It is not. It is not a good movie. It's not. It can be fairly fun to watch, but for a chunk of it, it seems like Logan is going to get revenge. I mean, we know that Sabretooth isn't going to be dead by the end of it. But we still have a sense that, you know, actually, con considering the fact that, and, and, and never mind, I gotta stick with this before I get distracted. We, you know, for a lot of that movie, what drives Logan is that he wants revenge, and then near the end, we realize he has nothing to avenge because she was not dead. I'm not saying there was a good twist, but it does, uh, you know, and then it seems like he's going to be able to rescue her. 
and we we get the fake out shot of them like moving towards the the sunset and then a revolver gets you know gets into the shot you know is is lifted into the shot and then you know shoot and he falls over and within minutes he's lost his memories he's lost the love of his life you know Th this episode and probably also the very last one are going to be like that last little bit you know for for so much of it you think it's it's going in one you know that's because that it, logan is very driven by revenge he tends to do things based on you know it, revenge and or being able to protect someone he cares about and then there at the end, he isn't able to protect the person he cares so deeply about. And, yeah, you know, I, I really love that they did specifically do this with him. Because that's the thing, like, we were almost getting, like, the, the sitcom aesthetic was almost like comfort food to us. It was like, it's like she never lost anyone at all, you know. And then, you know, for every three episodes... Of, of comfort food we get some harsh reality and yeah you know the 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 things that we learn in these episodes yeah so let's see um, yeah you know basically like for a while Wanda was pretending that everything was was fine and now she's in a place where she just she can't pretend anymore there's nothing she can do that yeah and and it is especially like it's especially powerful to see this episode after so many episodes where there was a lot of happiness and she, like even the episode before this one like yeah, the you know Wanda's falling apart in this all, but we still have the the like, ah, what's it called? You know when when Vision and Doctor Lewis is driving, you know suddenly they have to stop the car because people you know, it's, you know various things show up and it's like it's it's comical, it's it's ridiculous these things that slow them down, you know. But in this episode, nothing is ridiculous, nothing is funny or cute or is like, I mean, we have a couple of sweet moments. We have the, the Maximoff family together on TV night, and that leads directly into their parents' death, which, again, we knew that the parents were going to die. We didn't know that it was right in, you know, they, they were in such a happy moment, and then suddenly everything which again, I'm not saying it's it still hurts when you lose something when you were already in pain, but if you if you were especially happy and then you lose everything, it hits so much harder. And let's see, then you have the the yeah the other sweet moment was when she and Vision laugh at Malcolm in the Middle, and you know. Once we've seen that, it let's see, that was what was the very next thing? Yeah, then then we see that you know she's she's talking to the sword people and she she just wants to give him a proper burial, at least that's what she claims. And yeah, you know, so so it's like again, the fact that he died hurts so much more because they were so happy together. They were so sweet together. You know, like like, what what was the worst moment, like, you know, before the, the, the end of Infinity War? Like, what was the worst moment that Wanda and Vision shared together? Let's see, was it when he heroically flew in to save her after she killed the main Ultron body? And, you know, that... He he could very easily have ended up stuck in there and and died when, you know. Uh, let's see, it was yeah, it was a combination of Tony and Thor blowing up Sokovia. Maybe it was when they were like kind of casually flirting, 
in various scenes. Maybe it was when, you know, he, you know, she decided to cook for them because he didn't know how to be a great, you know, just, they, they have all these such sweet moments together, you know, so, yeah, it, it really, the, the fact that then she has to kill him and then it didn't even matter. You know, he gets killed immediately after again, you know, just, yeah. Th that's the thing, in this entire episode, I, I forget, there's like a quote, I, I don't remember it right now, but something like that, ah, crap, it's, I swear I won't spend forever trying to remember, but I feel like I, I can almost, what was it from? There's something about that, you know, after, let's see, something like, you know, f at, at first, there, you know, there's this happiness, there, there's love, but then the pain comes and it's, and it becomes like poison coursing through your veins until you reach the point where you wish you never had the that love to begin with. It's something like that. I know I'm butchering the quote. I'm sorry. And I don't remember what it's from. But, yeah, you know, that's... I feel like that's that's kind of the thing. That's why she, you know, she almost got to the point where she wished she never even met them. That she and Vision never met and fell in love and that whole thing. But what you know, the, the reason that she can still, you know, the, the, because she brought him back, she could, uh, yeah, let's see, I think that was anything I wanted to say about that, yeah, just to make absolutely sure, basically, yeah, every, every single time there's something sweet in this episode, it leads to tremendous pain and that's you know yeah there's there's no like hypothetically let's say that in one of the the one of the flashbacks we see that wanda actually had like a childhood friend that she kind of enjoyed being with and then, you know, there's, and, and we never saw, we never saw her, them dying. So maybe they're still out there. Maybe she can try to have a relationship with that. You know, not necessarily like love, but they would have a lot in common. They could talk about their past. They, that could help her hand, you know, get a, get a, what's it called? Like not feel as much trauma from the fact that, you know, that she lost I mean, as far as we know, she has now lost every single person that she knew before the events of Age of Ultron. It's it's possible that there is someone out there, but we haven't been told. I th yeah, I think there was a deleted scene of Age of Ultron where she and Pietro are helping out. And let's see. Yeah, so, so the helping out some of the locals and actually come to think of it I think one of those might have been the 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 young woman whose child is still I I, I don't remember the kid's name but he's the one that Hawkeye ran out to save when Pietro died which is also you know if, yeah if you have Disney plus I I mean okay not every single piece of you know, special feature on the MCU movies. It's not all amazing, but a lot of it is really good. <sighs> yeah, I'm not sure. I, I would say I've watched almost all of it from the MCU movies, and I've been very happy with all that I've seen. There's a few that I... Actually, yeah, there's a, there's a few that I haven't gotten around to watching it, but almost all of it. And, yeah, Age of Ultron deleted scenes include that Pietro did know that young woman that so you know when 
when Hawkeye runs to save that young woman's child, Pietro knows that woman, he knows that child, so he runs in, you know, he, he realizes that Ultron might, just out of pettiness and spite, try to kill, yeah, anyway, that, let's see, that brings us, but, but yeah, you know, the, there's nothing indicate, basically she has lost everyone, and there's not really going to be any, I mean, actually, yeah, I suppose the closest thing is she and Hawkeye have a, a reasonably positive relationship, but I don't think she's going to show up in the Hawkeye Disney Plus series as, as a major character, at least. It's possible she'll make a minor appearance, and, I have, and we haven't heard anything about him being in Doctor Strange 2, so, yeah. So this episode pretty much does come from the theory some people had that Agatha was not under Wanda's spell. She was intentionally playing along with the sitcom reality rules. And I also don't think there's much uncertainty left on whether or not Wanda herself knew what was going on. Based on this based on this episode, she appears to have known from right away what was going on and just playing along, basically letting herself enjoy a break from the pain of reality. She might have been surprised by something, but while it was under her control, occasionally something that happened required her to snap back out of it, as at the end of episodes one and two. I it is also still possible. If if it's possible that she has you know, dis disassociative identity disorder, and that one of her I guess I'm just gonna go with alters, one of her alters is the the you know the real one the grief stricken one and one of them is the the sitcom one that just doesn't think about how painful things were before the sitcom world started and certainly like when she you know she creates vision and then she takes a few steps and she's in black and white the smile on her face isn't the the like she she looks like I mean, the first episode, the intro has them driving, and it says "just married" on the on the car. You know, that's what she looks like. She looks like a young bride who's really happy to have just married the love of her life. She doesn't really look like she managed to create life out of nothing and now gets to pretend that the life she created out of nothing is equivalent, because it's not, to the real vision. You know, that's, that's the, like, when you, when you look at the exact reality, it's not that, and it was, it was creepy right from the start, but now that we know that really was just, she created a person out of nothing, and he's feeling serious existential angst, that's, you know, the, the, I, I mean, there's that episode where he says, I don't remember life from before Westview. Geography always fills him with ennui. And that's that's the reality. She didn't she didn't like she didn't manage to bring him back to life. She created new life and that new life is in pain. And and like that's that's the you know, now when you think back to all the scenes of a vision like asking questions and being confused by things and trying to piece together what is, you know, it's, it's, yeah, he legitimately, he doesn't remember anything. He knows that he loves her and he's not, he, he understands that she badly wants for, for them to be happy together, happy together again, but he can't push away that the, you know, he genuinely does, you know, yeah, again, when he confronts her, he says, we, you can't keep doing this to all these people. You know, it's not, the, the, this is not just the two of us are playing pretend. You have hypnotized an entire town, you know, I, I mean, we don't know exactly how many there are, but, I mean, with all those kids and all those parents, it's got to be several dozen, maybe a hundred people and all of them are under her control, and 
when someone is brought out of her control, we do see their their yeah the the they're they're terrified they're they're horrified at what is going on, which actually reminds me. Good thing I didn't stop recording yet. Those were those were the last two thing the last two things that Agatha did when you know when we see it was Agatha all along that sequence she does some magic to her but when he's you know cut through the the wall and she was only pretending when when Vision thinks he wakes her up and she's like are you here to save us both of those were to drive Vision to investigate you know to to be sure that there's something mysterious and dangerous going on you know when when herb says geraldine doesn't have a home here you know and she came here because we're all something and then you know that's that tells vision that there's something you know that makes him even more determined but even that doesn't appear to be quite enough, so Agatha intentionally drives to the edge of town and then stops the car so that when, you know, just waiting, just because when Vision flies up and then spot, you know, flies back down, he goes up to her and he's confused that she's, you know, having trouble. He's, he seems to wake her up and then she says, you know, you, you must be, are you here to save us? And then, you know, right after that, she drives away and he goes out through the, the force field. You know, that was Agatha. Maybe she wanted Vision. Maybe she knew that Vision would be destroyed or suspected as much and sent him out there so that he wouldn't keep being a problem for her. Maybe she wasn't sure exactly what would happen and she wanted to test, you know, yeah, hypothetically, if she does not know whether it's whether that's Vision's body, you know, brought back to life, or if it is Wanda having created life out of nothing, she, you know, if he leaves the force field, you know, if he can leave the force field and he's okay, that must mean she brought back the body. And let's see, the... Yeah, and, and that also led to Wanda expanding the force field and that might also have been something that Agatha wanted to happen. Let's see. But but yeah, you know, clearly she was trying to to find out more about Wanda's magic and her control over the sitcom. And we still don't know, you know, in the comics, the reason Sparky dies is, you know, basically Sparky eats this, this plant flower thing that, like, makes you see something and, let's see, was it that it ate too much and that killed it? I, I don't remember exactly, but I think there's, there's a chance that, that it's going to turn out to be something like that, but it might also be to see if. If Wanda could bring Sparky back to life. And let's see. Yeah, I mean, she she wanted for the kids to go through some some things so that the kids would develop their powers. That's why she sent Fietro. He was much better at getting the kids to, you know encouraging the kids to be you know yeah he's 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 he gets them to to misbehave and do what they feel like and you know which you know if if, Simps if that simpsons episode is anything to go by do what you feel like is not the best idea but yeah so the the What's it called? Um, you know, if, if Agnes came in and tried to get them to do really messed up things, Wanda would be like, okay, you're crossing the bound, you're, you're crossing the line here, we're neighbors, 
I, I think it's from now on, please don't show up unannounced, you know, but if it's Wanda's own twin brother, I mean, she can't throw him out. Don't be ridiculous. That would just be completely heartless. No, no, no. He's, you know, she does try to talk to him. She does say to him several times, can we please cool it here? Stop telling my kids to steal candy and all this stuff, you know. Let's see. And that is, I mean, now that it, it would appear that Wanda did create the children out of nothing. She created life out of nothing, you know, and the, the life, the, the children that she created out of nothing had superpowers. That's extremely useful. That's, that's something that, yeah, Agatha would probably kill to have that kind of thing, so... Yeah, that's, yeah, I, I can definitely see how that could, uh, yeah. Wow, this was the longest video I've recorded on this show, on, you know, talking about this show, but yeah, so, really, really psyched, really excited to see what the, the ending will be, and boy, am I going to miss this show, but there's more Disney Plus MCU, yeah more Disney Plus Marvel Studios shows, I guess they're called, right? Because MCU is only for the movies, because the C is cinematic. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of these shows. There's going to be one per week for a long time, it looks like. So, yeah, the, the... That is everything I had for this one, so I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching the recording, and I'll catch you next time.